You're listening to Never Go Against the Family, a podcast by the University of Northern Iowa Family Business Center. In this episode, you'll hear Dan chat with Iowa State Senator Adrian Dickey, who is also president and a third-generation leader of Dickey Transport out of Packwood, Iowa. Adrian shares his advice for Iowa families, touching on his experience, inheriting leadership, and surviving the transition between generations. Keep listening to hear that conversation. Hey everybody, welcome to um, to this edition of Never Go Against the Family, our Iowa Family Business Center podcast series uh, featuring family-owned companies across the state. Today, I have the pleasure of being with Adrian Dickey, uh, who is, I think, third generation with his family-owned company. Sure. And I'm going to let Adrian kind of talk a little bit more about that, about his involvement. And Adrian, maybe first, if you could kind of just introduce yourself and your generation and and, and how you came to be come involved in the company? Sure, thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, my name is Adrian Dickey uh, with Dickey Transport. I'm a third generation uh, family business owner. I currently have um, five others from the third generation that work at the business with me. Uh, my father, one aunt and uncle still are involved on a daily basis. Um, grandfather, okay. started, grandfather started back in the, the late 1950s. Um, basically with uh, gas stations and then um, bought trucks to haul fuel to the gas stations and and the trucking side grew where the gas you know the gas side uh, the convenience store side of the business we've we've sold most of those assets off over the last several years but um, uh, okay. so actually a trucking company. what was that you were actually in the convenience store business initially. Yes. Yep, yep. That's kind of how we started. Convenience stores, truck stops, restaurants, grocery stores, just, uh, you know, Grandpa was quite an entrepreneur. Actually, he started, um, he really started in a farm implement dealership uh, business and then went off to the war, hired somebody to run that when he was at the war. When he came back, it was basically going so well. He's like, well, no reason to mess with it. So he started to uh, build gas stations and, um, you know, and just many businesses like that over the years involved through his uh, his niche, I guess, to see a, a need and, and try to jump into that space. But um, probably in the last 10 years, we have sold off most all the all the other businesses um, and, and just try to focus on what we do well. And that's trucking as opposed to trying to do a lot of things. Yeah, really OK. Uh, yeah, try to do one thing really well. So did you get your start, Adrian, in, in a convenience store setting or driving a truck or where did you start? Well, yep, I started, uh, I started in the, in the trucking side um, uh, in junior high, started washing, uh, washing trucks, uh, sweeping the shop floor, mowing yards. Uh, um, you know, that was where I got my first taste of the business. Um, did that through old high school, went off to college to UNI and um and uh, I, I hurried through school. I got done in three years just so I could get back to, to the family business. It was uh, that much of an interest to me. Okay. And do you have siblings involved with you too? You know, you mentioned five in your generation. Is that? Yes. Um, no, my, I have one younger sister, another UNI grad, but, uh, but she is not involved in the business. Okay. Um, so of the, of the five of the third generation that are involved, um, they're from three different families. Sure, your cousins and that kind of thing then. Or excuse me, four different families, four different families. Okay. Yeah. And um, are you at a stage now where, I don't know if you have kids or not, Adrian, but do you, if you do, or if you have nieces yep. and nephews, are any of them start to show so, some interest? So it's kind of, you know, my son's a senior in high school this year. And, and for the last four years, he's worked at the at the office. And he's okay. kind of going to UNI next year. Oh. Um, and and I'm not sure if there's a strong desire for him to return to the business, but it was a difficult conversation that I've had with several of our, you know, my cousins in that um, sustaining third generation, sustaining any family business is difficult. Sustaining it from one generation to the next is another level of difficulty. And then oh, yeah. uh, to, to try to take it from the third to the fourth generation, um, it gets really, really challenging. And, and I think you have to be 
uh, the business has to be at, at a scale, a very, very large scale to be able to support that. Um, and I and I don't feel our business is probably large enough to support a, a fourth generation to join into it, okay. which is difficult. Um, would like to see that, but um, you, you got to look at the business and make sure that it's going to work for the business. Even if the person coming has value, um, you still got to work and make it make it work for the business. Yep, have a spot on the bus that is appropriate. And yeah. And fit for them and that's yeah. interesting you bring that up um because certainly liquidity becomes a big big issue for you know retiring cousins in your case often they call that the cousin consortium or something along <laughs> those lines third generation and and how do they find you know the ability to to cash flow uh pay out owners and I, you know, I don't know if you have an approach where it's, uh, is it required to be an active participant in the business to be an owner at this point in your family or do you yes. not have? We have that in place, correct. Um, all, all the owners are still active into the business, in the business. Okay. Well, it sounds like, you know, I'd love to get your advice for our listeners then at this yes. point, Adrian, as far as some of the things that you've already mentioned and some of the things I'm guessing you've already experienced just based on what you've said already, you know, as far as, well, if we just start with that active versus passive approach to ownership, I mean, have you, have you experienced both or have you just, ex, you know, do you know that your family has always pushed for, you've got to be an active member to be an owner and that has what's worked. And do you have any advice for other families along the lines of that topic? You know, we've, I'd say fortunately, really never even had that, haven't had that conversation, at least in, in great depth. Um, um, you know, grandpa started the business, my, my dad, two uncles and an aunt, uh, out after college, they all joined the business. And at some point, uh, you know, they they bought out grandpa and, and had, a, you know, had the ownership and, and we're all of them are still active in the business today. That conversation hasn't really taken place as to whether you have to be active or not. I had one uncle that did retire probably um, seven, eight years ago. And, and he, he wanted to, you know, I want to say cash out, I don't like that word, but he wanted to sell his shares and it gave the, um, a, a few of us other in the third generation an opportunity to, um, to have some ownership buy into the company. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. And, and so I think it'd be very difficult to to have non-participating or non-active owners in a business. Um, I, I don't see how you can give them voting rights. That makes it even more challenging, especially when you're talking smaller scale. Um, yeah. They're not, they're not seeing the needs of the businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. For them to have voting rights, it'd be very difficult, in my opinion. But then having ownership of a company and not having any voting rights would be difficult as well. So um, oh, yeah. we've been fortunate that that really hasn't been much of an issue. Okay. Do you, um, in light of like your grandfather started all of this, you said, and mm -hmm. you know, he have thoughts of it being a, a family company at some point is, you know, I'm, I'm assuming he's passed on now, but maybe mm -hmm. not, but you no, know, would he, you know, what would he think of, of where things are at now for you guys, do you think? I, yeah, I think he, um, yeah, I kind of think he had that in the back of his mind um, that, that it'd be, a, you know, the, the, his children would come into the business. And part of that is because of the different, um, the different businesses that were there. You know, there was kind of a, you know, there was a trucking side and my uncle kind of started off there. My dad started off in the, the gas stations and convenience stores and, there was kind of a little bit of a niche that each person was maybe in until we brought it all together. So, sure. um, yeah, I would think that was uh, maybe in the back of his mind. Um, so he kind of, you know, he was very proud. Um, I, 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 he passed away in 94, I believe. And, and so, um, you know, I guess spent a lot of time visiting with him and he was adamant you had to go to college to return to the business. That was his requirement. Um, you had to go to college to return to the family business and and he wanted a place there for anybody that wanted to return to it um, 
So he did have that kind of a foresight of some requirements of family members, some hoops to jump through, if you will. And it, yep. I'm assuming you've kept that going then even for your generation of the business then as well. Y- yes. Um, you know, and again, we're, we're to the fourth generation is not really coming in yet, but that's, you know, it's, uh, that's one of those conversations you just have to have on a whole different scale, um, whether you can even support another generation or not, but um, yep. but yes, you know, it, 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 and either college, um, you have to go to college or have other experience. Sure. You know, sure. Um, I, I, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm in the Iowa Senate and I'm the chairman of the labor or workforce committee. And I'm not a, I don't drink the Kool-Aid and think that everybody's got to go to college. I mean, there's, there's many great um, professions that are not involved with college. Um, oh yeah. College, you, em- you employ a lot of them. I mean, that's uh, right. yeah, our, our drive. Yeah, our professional drivers are home every weekend. They're making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. That's a pretty phenomenal pay for, um, um, oh, yeah, without any college experience. And and that's very true with with many businesses. But college is great for many people. It's just not required for everybody. Yeah, um, you got our trade schools. You know, the same way they have a they feel a great need um, of uh, of educating people. So it's it, it's it's. To me, the the re- college requirements not maybe the way that my grandfather first thought it was. Sure, um, but and that different time too, you know. That's when that right. But thing, but the, kind of drive for. Yeah, but the thought you got to go get experience somewhere, you know. Right. Um, graduate, you maybe go somewhere for a couple or couple years and work somewhere else. Maybe that gives you not only does it give you experience, but my, I think it also gives you appreciation if you're able to return to a family business that it's not a gravy train right it's a job but there are some perks that come with it that you may not experience somewhere else um right and, and, and experiencing that somewhere else might make you a little more aware of what those are yeah a little more appreciative probably and a little more uh, maybe aware of how other people are doing things bringing some value add back to the family company too as yep. well um yep advice you would have you know this is kind of a last question maybe but any kind of advice you might have for for other Iowa family companies on on getting to that third generation because you know only about a third of them make it to the second generation and and you know most of that is is because of it's not because the business failed it's because uh the family side had difficulties and and you have made it you know you've already survive the odds and so i didn't know if you, if you had some thoughts on what's helped your family make it this far yeah actually in college uh, you and i my my thesis was on third generation family businesses and and um, really? yeah uh, a long long time ago and i remember the statistic back then this was in 94 95 was i think three out of a thousand make it to the third generation it's just um you know it's just the odds are certainly against you but what i tell you know, I've talked with many family businesses and and what I tell everybody, well, in our case, I was the first of the third generation to come back. Okay. And when my other cousins returned, I, I told them, you take the word fairness and you check it at the door um, because nothing here is fair. You know, you're, you're very blessed. We're very blessed for the opportunities we have here, but nothing's fair. Um, you know, uh, and you got to do what's right for the people that work with you and, and in your family and more importantly, the business, right? right. You, you can't right. put the business on the back burner and avoid tough conversations because they're family members and tough conversations. But uh, but fairness it gets checked at the door because fairness is only in the perception of the of the viewer, right? Right. Um, what I may think is fair um, is completely different than a cousin of mine that may think what is something is fair. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, you know, you, you, you've got to be comfortable. Everybody's got to be comfortable and happy and, and, and you can never bring up the word fair. <laughs> no, I think that's well said. I mean, and um, everybody has to have kind of the ability to, to talk through these things. So assumptions aren't made. And um, mm-hmm. that's, uh, I think that's a great point. Uh, you mentioned you interact with a lot of family companies. So mm-hmm. probably as clients of your own company or, uh, folks you interact with otherwise, um, 
Are there things that you see other families not spend enough time on or uh, maybe hitches that, that you, you know, in hindsight, you could, you wish they had done differently and maybe I'll, we'll end with that. Yeah, I think in most family businesses are, um, you know, one that downsides, you're never off, you know, and you can go on vacation, you're on 24 seven. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the, you know, I want to say perks, that's just part of a family business. But I think because of that, most family businesses maybe stretch themselves a little too thin when it comes to hiring others. Um, okay. You know, I think if you're a business owner, you probably have more people typically around you to support the business. When you're a family business owner, you try to do more of it yourself or within the family. And I, I, I see often family businesses seem to get stretched uh, too thin um, because they're wearing too many hats. Sure. And, and you know, other than the fairness uh, advice I give, um, the other big piece of advice is that don't stretch yourself too thin or you know try to keep it just among the family because it's it's difficult to do all this to the level that has to be done without getting burnt out because again you're yeah. on 24 7. Yeah I agree I totally agree with that I think sometimes it's it's hard you know to trust non-family sometimes or really? that uh, you know but you gotta weigh the the alternative is that you're burning the candle at both ends potentially. So this is, yep. this is great advice for our Iowa family businesses, Adrian. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time um, and your thoughts here. And, and uh, as well as that, I want to mention, we appreciate your service, both sounds like as a, as a firefighter um, and also in the um, sounds like you've got a lot going on. So um, very much Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank it's you a again for your time. Absolutely. Anytime. Appreciate it, Dan. You guys are doing great work up there at the uh, at you and I on this. Thanks for listening to this episode of Never Go Against the Family, a podcast produced by the University of Northern Iowa Family Business Center. You can find more information about the center, membership, and upcoming events at unifamilybusinesscenter.com. As Vito Corleone advises, never go against the family.